I've, I've struggled a lot in the world because I see that there's so much wrong with it, the way it works. And this is one movement, this is one step that is in, in the right direction, I believe, for my goal. So, so how old are you now? Uh, 20. You're 20 almost 21. Now. Yeah, I'll be 21 in February. So. Yeah. So where do you stay when you're not here? Like, do you, you said you're still in the system. I actually have a place just down, okay. just down a couple streets. But this is a, such a cause for me, and I believe in it so much, like that I, I want to actually be here on the spot. I made this my occupation. See, my, my goal was to go to uh, get a job, build up enough to take it alone, and then go to Atlantica and take fashion design. But. I figure if I do this long enough and we get recognized, you know, that I, be, I can market my skills to the people instead of working for an agency or a corporation, mm -hmm. so. Now you said you, you came out here, what, starting two weeks ago now. Um, what was the, what, what specifically brought you out? Like, what was the moment where you said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna come out here and, and I'm gonna take part in this, this uh, movement that's uh, North America wide, not just St. John, right? Uh, for one, uh, I was part of it. I actually joined the, the before it actually started. I was I was told by a friend that it was going to happen, uh, but three weeks, two weeks, sometime in between there, uh, before it actually happened, before 14 days ago. And uh, I actually did my research, and there was already so many countries involved. So it was such a global thing um, that I felt that it was you know it was it, it was something that I could speak for. I, I researched the information, how it started, Occupy Wall Street, and. And, and you know, there's. I, I think it's one step, like I said. Right? And also on top of that, uh, I, one of my good friends is the one who led me towards it. So I figured it'd be a good cause. Yeah. What's your experience been being out here? Like, what kind of what kind of people are, are, are camped out here with you? A lot of good people. A lot of good people. Yeah. To be honest, I, I'd say they're all good people. Yeah. <laughs> For even being here, I mean. I'd say about, uh, actually, I'd say all, all the people that are actually camping here have homes. We all choose to be here. Um, we're trying to get a lot of different demographics here, too, instead of just the young generation, yeah. because it'll look better. Because yeah. that's been <laughs> very pronounced. Lot, I, the good thing is, so I've had a lot of elderly, yeah. I don't, I don't want to say that to put anyone down, but the elders, I've had elders come to me, and I, I believe they support us on a large scale. You know. Um, I've talked to a lot of people that know of the corruption in Irving and other other areas, how he uh, is monopolizing everything and uh, giving jobs at places outside of Canada. <coughs> you know, a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, I take care of the media and stuff here and the direct, you know, I, I'm the info man as <laughs> you've probably heard. So, Mike, I, when I, I talked to some folks here last week, some young guys, and some of them had talked about actually living um, in their homes for periods of time. What, what, what are the I've actually been homeless a couple times too. Yeah. By choice, but also I wouldn't call it really choice when you're being treated like a, a like you're worthless, and then you decide you know you can't be there anymore. Do you mind elaborating on that experience? Um, I was in uh, the first time I was I was homeless was uh, I was up in St. Stephen at a group home up there, and I just felt it was too much. I wasn't being treated properly. So much inequality, unequal treatment. A lot of things. So I decided, you know, I wanted to go see my girlfriend who was down in, here in St. John. And I came and I was on the street for about a week and a half out of that two weeks that I was here and uh, eating bread and water, <laughs> you know, every day going down the Romero house, um, which I thank them for that, you know, supporting me. Uh, and I met a lot of people. I know a lot of homeless people around here. And I, you know, I have, I have a friend that is homeless right now and, you know, it's sad. It's sad when we have so much wealth in Canada that we actually have to have people on the street. Mike, what is it? What is the Occupy movement? What does it mean to those people? Right, those people that you're talking about suffering and on the street. <laughs> how does that? How does that big global movement connect to their everyday lives? I believe that it's. It, they see it as an important thing. I've talked to a couple. I've talked to a couple people that see it as a good thing, and I've you know. At the same time, I believe that they're struggling so much that they can't really be a part of it, or they don't feel they can be a part of it. 
Um, I'd like to actually, there's another tent city somewhere in Rockwood Park, I believe, that yeah. they put out. I'd like to get them here, you know, because the truth is it does affect ev almost everyone anyway. <laughs> we are the 99 is the saying, you know, and it's true because the 1% is so slim. There really is very few that are, are hoarding and, and have plotted this for so long to take our wealth. Now, now, now you said that you've been homeless at points and that you've, uh, you know, you relied on places like Romero House when you when you yes. were on the streets, and I noticed that you guys are, are collecting yep. food for Romero House. Yep. And they're coming to pick it up. Uh, yes, they yeah. they've uh, we've only actually done one big huge <laughs> giveaway so far. We collected for a while. We had a whole bunch of tubs, and they came and picked that up. Um, we're getting. It seems to be that we're getting less donations as of recently. I I don't know if that's because. I don't know. The, the structure of our day is a little bit different. We used to get people honking and you know spreading awareness that way. Unfortunately, we took that away because we have to build more structure here to, to actually get things done. But uh, I, I believe that a large portion of the people here are, are supportive of that. We've had a lot of donations even for the encampment, not just for Romero House, but so that we can you know say here and, <laughs> and actually eat and drink. Yeah. You know, we've had coffee, donuts. And yeah, I noticed earlier some young, it looks like some young students from the school yes. came by with donuts and coffee yep. for you. And, uh, yes, and, and people that have had hard lives too, and they're coming here and supporting. So what, for you, Mike, when this is, because eventually you're going to move up here. Yeah. Trying to get pick up your sound. Sure, yeah. Actually, just pick up your sound. Yeah. So so eventually, Mike, I mean, you're going to move out of the park, and you're going you're gonna to go back to your apartment or whatever, but what, what's the next piece in all this for you? Uh, sometimes I feel lost, I don't know where to go. But to be honest, I think if I can find people that have the similar belief, the similar, not even the belief, just the want to end suffering, those are the people I want to be around. Yeah. I have to ask you some pra a couple of practical questions. Like, yeah. it's getting colder here at night. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how are you coping with that night overnight? Now, when you were homeless yourself, uh, what time of year was it? Uh, winter. It was winter. Yeah. Right. I was sleeping in people's doorways, apartment doorways, like in the in the foyer, if you want to call it. Um, there's a couple nights that I slept outside. So in but, some ways, you're probably better prepared this time because it looks like you guys are pretty well outfitted here. Uh, yeah. Well, we have still have a lot. We have some resource people that will be coming back today. Um, our tent. That's the tent I'm in. We have a we have a couple tarps up over top of it. Uh, a good idea, I, I, I think, is that I didn't even come up with, to be honest, is that uh, put blankets over it and tarps uh, to keep a layer of warmth, to keep the heat in. We're going to have crank gener a crank generator hopefully here soon, uh, Sunday, actually. Um, I was talking to a man, and he decided he was going to give us a crank generator, so that's pretty cool. That'll give us some supply heat for you know, heaters, maybe some, we can get some emergency heaters or something to attach to it. Um, we're asking for uh, sub-zero sleeping bags and quite a few things to keep warm, right? Yeah. But uh, we, in my opinion, I believe the reason we're here is, you know, and the good, good thing is to stay here because if we move and we show that we're giving up just because of the winter, it's gonna show that we're giving up. <laughs> we can't pull through, and I mean, there's gonna be harder times to come. There's always somebody harder, harder, you know, that's suffering even more that we, you know, if they can do it, then we should show that we can do it as well, right? To support people that are suffering. 